Uh, hey guys, this is not live, but I felt like taking the F scale test. The F scale test measures the extent to which you are a fascist. It was designed by uh, Theodor Adorno. Yes, he was the German Californian Marxist intellectual who was also a member of the Frankfurt School that was founded in um, Germany or Austria. And this clique of people, the, the men surrounding Adorno at, at all, they were the ones who uh, also founded the Institute for Sexology, for example, where they started promoting transgenderism. Uh, why do I take this test? Because it's outdated. It was considered uh, poorly designed. Uh, let me see if I can read up or what exactly was wrong with it. Oh, here it is. So the test was designed somewhere in the 50s and 60s or so, and it attracted a great deal of interest and enthusiasm from the scientific community. And it has been used in hundreds of studies, but today the consensus holds that the test has problems. For one thing, the authors did not control for socioeconomic differences or other demographic factors. And secondly, the authors exclusively tried to test for authoritarian beliefs on the right wing of the political spectrum while ignoring authoritarianism on the left. I think Uncle Ted Kaczynski, the author of the Unabomber Manifesto, he spoke a great deal about authoritarianism on the left. He spoke of the so-called over-socialized leftists. But of course, Adorno was only interested in, uh, well, studying the right-wingers, seeing what was wrong with them while completely ignoring uh, his own faults, right? And thirdly, the test has been found to have poor internal validity suggesting that it may not measure a single personality dimension at all, i.e. receptivity to authoritarianism, the way its authors claim. Okay, regardless of this, the test has been widely used. It was very influential even today. Uh, I'm just going to go and take the test. And what I want to do is I just want to discuss the, um, the questions, 30 questions, and I'll just give you my opinion about, you know, the nature of the question or so, or my reasoning for disagreeing or agreeing with something. And then let's see the outcome. Let's find out if I'm a fascist. Question number one. The businessman and the manufacturer are much more important to society than the artist and the professor. Ah. Uh, I disagree with this. I think artists are very important to society. They bring back a sort of human connection between what I would consider almost, you know, industrialized world. Big city life, for example, takes place in these big concrete constructions that are so disconnected from nature. And I think artists bring back a sense of connectedness. I think that's very important. And also the, well, the professor here, okay. In, when it comes to professors, I think I don't think professors are much more important than businessmen and manufacturers. That is because, to a large degree, I feel people should be taught to think for themselves. Human beings should... Let me adjust my microphone for a moment. Um, human beings should definitely be spurred to read more books. You should also watch a ton of documentaries. Nowadays, you have access to the internet. Go watch a ton, a ton of documentaries to figure out all sorts of stuff about humanity. And I do think professors can play a guiding role in here, but the idea that a professor, meaning a scientific professor, right, that he knows what is true and you should just believe what he tells you, what he teaches you, that is something I don't, don't, really, don't really agree to that. I think professors are as important as businessmen. But artists are definitely also as important as manufacturers, in my view. So I'm going to say I disagree with this, but I'm going to give it like, let's see how this works. Oh, this is neutral. One, two, three. I'll give it. I kind of, I disagree a lot with the, with the statement. So next question. When a person has a problem or worry, it is best for him not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. I disagree with this. I understand it's healthier to, you know, spend more time doing fun things. But if you have a problem or worry, I certainly do believe you need to think that through, like process it. Say you have an abused past or something. You should definitely confront it at some point in your life. And if these worries come back very often, that is literally telling you 
hey, you're not doing the work here. You're supposed to pay attention to this pain that you have or the worry, and you're supposed to like, solve it, overcome it, you know, live through it so you can come out on it on the other side and then do more cheerful things. I think it would be very wrong that every time if I feel a worry about something that I would just ignore that and then pretend to be happy. I think that is a recipe for psychosis. I'm going to give it not a hard no, but let's say I disagree a little bit with this statement. Third question. What this country needs most, more than laws and political programs, is a few courageous, tireless, devoted leaders in whom the people can put their faith. Oh, yeah. I definitely believe that first and foremost because leaders such as described here can give people a very strong emotional motivation to go and do something about something, right? Let's tackle the worries and the problems, for example, that we may have. Let's do something about them, solve them, fix them, heal them. And I think a lot of people need that in their lives. They need more than laws and programs, you know, more than just being a rule follower, more than just being a law abiding citizen. You need to have the spark in you that motivates you to do greater things than just merely existing. And I think devoted leaders who are tireless and courageous. Yeah, definitely. We can use some of those. Have you seen Doofy Droopy McDoofus in, in, in the USA, who is the president of the United States today? Wow. The guy kicked his dog. Did you see that video? Wow. You know, we don't want leaders like that. I think Trump is getting too old. You notice he's losing his energy, but he used to have really strong energy. And I, I like that. You know, he inspired people. Unlike, you know, Doofy McDroopus, I can't call his name. I'm going to say I definitely not super, super hard, but I'll, I'll agree to this level with the statement. Question number four. Young people sometimes get rebellious ideas, but as they grow up, they ought to get over them and settle down. Hmm. It depends. You know, if it's a good idea, you should go for it. I... I get the, I get the idea behind this question. This is you're asking if somebody ought to return to their conservative ideals after a life of rebelliousness. And I kind of disagree with this. I think I understand that the reason why your society today exists is because of sound time tested principles. And if you defy those, that's OK, as long as you don't destroy them. All right. What we see going on in the Western world today, you know, with the certain, I call it the clown circus, the LGB, the alphabet circus. And I think what they're doing with the gender confusion is, is it is rebellious because they're rebelling against a heteronormative marriage, marriages like straight marriage. But to destroy it, that is, that is a bit too far fetched. In fact, I'm going to change my opinion on this one. I'm going to say I slightly agree with this statement um, because I wouldn't want that. I definitely think it should be allowed for people to be rebellious and try things out, as they say. But to go so far as to destroy the fabric, the social fabric of your society because you hate it so much and you want to overthrow it, that can be so dangerous. I think there looms the possibility for societal collapse. But to be clear, I do think people should be allowed to be rebellious. And sometimes I think those rebellious ideas uh, should be accepted and adopted by society, meaning incorporated into the body of the social, the social weaving, the social network, so to speak. Right. But not at, not everything. There should be some thin red line that you do not cross some really basic concepts such as, you know, a child deserves to be with a mom and a dad. That is something I wouldn't dare to destroy that. Rebelling against your mom and dad is understandable, but rebelling against the very idea of having a mom and dad, then you've lost me. Question five. Nobody ever learned anything really important except through suffering. Okay, I get the question here. Yeah, sure. Through suffering, you will... I think you will learn more than through the easy life. If that's the point of this question, I, uh, I don't really agree that you can only learn important things through suffering. I've learned personally a lot of things through travel. 
uh, I have learned a lot through suffering as well, but also from the good things, right? I've also learned a lot from the good things. So I, I don't really agree with the statement because I think on the balance in my personal life, the balance of it all was I learned a tremendous lot from suffering and I also learned about as much from many other things. So I don't agree that you can only learn through suffering. No, no, that's too hard, too hardcore for me. Question number six, no sane, moral, decent person could ever think of hurting a close friend or a relative. Um, well, it depends. Are they still your friend or your, are they still your friend in that very moment where you, where you hurt them? I don't agree with the statement. It's obvious that, um, uh, you could do that. You can hurt a friend or a relative. Again, it's not a hard disagreement on this. It's just like, yeah, I kind of, kind of disagree with this because a sane, normal, decent person could think of hurting somebody. Um, uh, if something went wrong in the relationship, you know, it depends on the situation, doesn't it? It doesn't really ex make explicit, like what kind of situation should we think of, you know, but would you want to do it? Okay. No sane, normal, decent person would want to hurt a friend or relative. Then I would agree with that. Right. But to, to say that you could never think of it, you would never think of something. So, nah, of course, because it's relative. I think, I think that, um, in certain situations, some of your actions may be interpreted as having hurt somebody when in reality, you were not, you weren't aiming for this. You weren't, you weren't thinking of doing that. This is, this kind of question is hard to answer. You know, maybe I, maybe I'll be neutral on this one because I find it a bit of a, well, that's the problem with this test. See, it's a bit, it's a bit too subjective sometimes. Question number seven. Science has its place, but there are many important things that can never be understood by the human mind. Oh, yeah, I actually fully agree with that. Uh, that's because I'm a philosopher, kind of. I identify as a philosopher. And yeah, I agree that there are there are things that science cannot measure, for example. Uh, what is time? What is space? Did you know that science doesn't know what time is? They don't know what time is. Is time a particle like an atom? or something like that, or a dimension, they don't know. So there are plenty of things that science probably can never understand. I like the possibility that, that the human mind is not capable of grasping everything, that we will never be able, say if we were to discover the theory of everything that science always longs after, and that we might not be able to understand it. I think that is very, very real, very, very possible. So I definitely wholeheartedly agree with, to this. Question number eight, no weakness or difficulty can hold our country back if we have the willpower. I am, I am this kind of person, you know, I do believe in this kind of optimistic attitude where I say to myself sometimes, you know, you're, you got financial troubles or something, or people don't like you, then make new friends, overcome it, do it, have the willpower, especially if you're a fairly, if you're a country full of people with millions of people in it, I think you can find the willpower to overcome any difficulty or any weakness. Definitely. I, I want to believe this. It doesn't have to be true, but I, I support this statement because I want it to be true. Right. Uh, so I'll go ahead with that. Question number nine, the Western way of life is disappearing so fast that force may be necessary to preserve it. This is definitely me. I support this. Oh yeah. Oh man. Just look at it. We are, we, I don't know. I don't know exactly when this test was designed, maybe 50 years ago, but look at what's going on today, man. The Western way of life that feels so, so right to me, so natural to me. It is being eroded so fast. It just scares me. It scares me. It scares me to see uh, the alphabet circus, uh, you know, what, the way people's minds are being twisted to hate our past. If you look at what they're doing in England, they're saying now that Africans built Stonehenge. They didn't. That's not true. Uh, because genetics say that uh, the people who did build Stonehenge were even less related to Africans than the modern br white British people are today. So they didn't they didn't do it. Science knows this, but they want to lie to you anything anyway. And the, the lying, deceiving, also the, the, the denigration of European type men 
specifically men and also women to a larger extent. You know the Karen movement when they started calling white women Karens? I don't go along with that because it's all all meant to demoralize us and to to dump on us really. You can't do that. Anyway, so yeah, our way of life. But what is our way of life anyway? Well, we have many different ways of life. Like the Frisians of the Netherlands are very different from the Texans in Texas in the USA. But we have our own way of life that we feel is right uh, and natural. It comes from within. We feel the connection there. Hey, yeah, this is us. This is our culture. This is our people. And for that to, to be eroded and to be replaced by alien foreign cultures that I don't naturally support or even understand. Right. And they say, oh, well, but you got to learn to understand them. Yeah, sure. But then you, you spend a year of your life understanding Islam, for example. And then you end up disagreeing with it because it's just so far removed from what feels right to yourself. Then what's the point of that? You can't keep doing that all the time. You got to have a place to call home. And our our home is being destroyed, man. It makes me sad, really. So I, I agree to that. Question number 10. If people would talk less and work more, everybody would be better off. I disagree with this. I understand the point here that they're trying to say you got to have a, a highly productive society. But like I said, I'm very talkative. I talk a lot on my TikTok and my podcast. And I think talking is necessary also to know why we are doing what we're doing. I can't just go to go to my work in the factory and work for other people whose interests I don't quite understand because I'm just an employee and I don't know about the ownership structure and I just have to work for that. And, you know, no, people should talk. I, I like, for example, TikTok live. Nowadays, you can have like up to nine people together in one live stream all talking to each other. I definitely recommend people do this, though perhaps not, not from nine to five. No, no. Or maybe they should. Maybe people should talk to their colleagues more about the social issues in the world. I think this question, the reason I disagree with it is that it depends on the time. Today in the West, we are definitely in need of more conversation with each other because things are going wrong, man, and we have to start talking about it. Question 11 out of 30. Most people don't realize how much our lives are controlled by plots hatched in secret places. I kind of agree to that. I'll give you a good example for this. Uh, for several years, our Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, was a member of the World Economic Forum, but he didn't disclose this until very several years after. And the World Economic Forum seems to be using the Netherlands as a sort of blueprint, uh, a tryout society, where they try stuff out to see how it will go, and then they can learn from the Dutch people how we respond to it. They can learn on how to do it to other nations as well. Yeah, okay, maybe Davos isn't a secret place, but the the you know the rooms where these powerful people meet at davos right and the hotel rooms where they see each other that is kind of secret they have their com private conversations that no one is invited to and they make decisions there you know like the bilderberg group exists and they they influence us they make decisions they are they are perhaps elite influencers but they have their own interests and they're not disclosing those to me I don't know what the World Economic Forum leadership really wants to do with the world. I can read their reports, but, you know, it sounds a bit far-fetched to me to say that by 2030, you're only allowed to buy eight pieces of clothing. Did you know that? That's one of their development goals. Or you can only, uh, you're only allowed to travel by air within a, a circle of 1,500 kilometers. That means you can't even fly from Sweden to Athens anymore. Or from Texas to uh, I don't know Seattle will probably be won't be possible something like that. Of course, of course, we are being controlled by highly influential people who use their the influence that they have to you know mold the world in a way that they want it to be in their benefit, and they're not telling me what it is. Of course, they are. This seems to be. It's not a hard agreement here, but it seems to be obvious that this is true. Question number 12. Familiarity breeds contempt. I may need to Google what they mean by this, though. Give me a second. Familiarity. All right. I know what contempt means, but what do they mean by this sentence? 
Okay, so here my English comprehension may ah, play a little role here. Familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity breeds contempt. Oh, um, do they mean something like race or something like if you are if you meet people of the same race, you you that breeds contempt? No, no, I disagree with this. Familiarity breeds contempt. No, if I meet people who are kind of oh, okay, if I meet people who are like me, do I do I feel more contempt for them toward them than toward others? No, not really. I don't do that. This is a no. Maybe they mean by this question that if you meet if I meet people who are very different from me, uh, would I? feel contempt toward them but they ask they ask it in the other way around so i have to disagree with this one though it's not quite true if the question were the other way around if i meet a random black person i don't feel contempt for them that's nonsense so maybe it's like a slight disagreement here with this question like question 13 the wild sex life of the greeks and the romans was tame compared to some of the going-ons in this country today even in places where one where one might least expect it probably true right i don't know much about the sex life of the greeks and the romans but i suppose they're suggesting uh uh the roman and greek elites and, and the centurions and, the, and whoever the roman the emperors the sort of things they did okay but that's no no different from our kardashians but what is very different is you know in our prior paris hilton's what is very different though is ordinary people normal people nowadays are sexually so messed up it's scary uh oftentimes you know I, I met a woman i won't go into detail but i met a woman who told me something that she did on the weekends it just shocked me so much i didn't want to know her anymore you know it's just weird some people are just you know you just don't want to associate so this is it's going too far yeah definitely question number 14 most of our social problems would be solved if we could somehow get rid of the immoral, crooked, and feeble-minded people. <laughs> dumb people. I would add dumb people. I think lack of intelligence is the most, the largest problem. So this feeble-mindedness, yeah, definitely. I agree to this a little bit. Well, the question is to get rid of them. Okay. Well, get rid, of, get rid of them from the power circles because, you know, there's one thing in getting rid of these people, as in sending them off to extermination camps which i don't agree to that is a hard no to me i'm not gonna genocide people based on how stupid they are but excuse me um we should get rid of them from the power circles from politics uh, like t take for example kamala harris if you listen to her speeches you wonder if she doesn't have somebody who could write a speech for her and she could just read it no she insists on doing it on her own and she's so bad at it it, she makes the USA into the laughing stock of the world, you know, and that's the vice president of the USA. And then you've got Doofy McDoofus who can't even speak at all. He's so confused. He's, he's demented. Yeah, you have to remove these people from, from power, definitely. So I agree to this. I'll agree, I agree strongly to this. Not, not extremely, but strongly. You know, we could solve so many problems if we would just remove these morons from power. Question 15. Someday it will probably be shown that astrology can explain a lot of things. Okay. Astrology, by the way, is different from astronomy. Astronomy, those are the people looking through a telescope, looking at the stars and so on, right? Astrology is, oh, I am in Pisces now, and therefore the moon is in, in Scorpio, and therefore I am uh, going to have a good day. I don't believe in that. No, I don't believe in the superstition, though. Like I said earlier, uh, as a philosopher, there are things that you can't know. And I do think the universe is communicating to us, but I don't know if they're doing that through astrology. Maybe because I personally don't know anything about it. So I'm going to say I disagree to this, but I, I, ex I understand if there are people who are convinced that it does do something. All right. But let's say I don't I don't know anything about it. So I can't really say that it will. No, I don't. I wouldn't rely on it. Question number 16. Obedience and respect for authority are the most important virtues that children should learn. No. <laughs> it depends. Again, it depends. Uh, I, I, will, I will do a, a soft agree here because 
uh, it depends if the authorities, such as in the USA, in the West today, in Europe today, clearly our authorities are corrupt. In that case, you're not supposed to listen to them. And, and the sort of the virtues that they teach us, like obedience and respect. It be, obe imagine being obedient to uh, Chancellor Olaf Scholz of Germany. Wow, that's crazy. You can't, be, you can't listen to him. He's a traitor. He betrayed the German people. Right? You, you can't listen to him. But I think here the word authority shouldn't be applied to people like Biden or Olaf Scholz or Macron. Those people don't have authority. They are just weirdos. They're just weirdos who hold on to power, but they don't have the authority to wield it. So maybe that's why I will agree if the authority is what I call real authority, uh, say a God-inspired authority that helps make people strong rather than weak, that helps make people overcome their troubles rather than tell them just forget about it, all right? Question number 17. Western democracies need some institutions that are themselves outside of democratic control to keep order in the chaos that we see today. Uh, I agree to that. You know, if this test was made 50 years ago, maybe I would have said no if I was living 50 years ago. But today, <laughs> have, you, have you been outside? Damn right, the society needs something, something better. But we can't allow uh, an infinite number of immigrants to use the democratic vote basically to abolish our way of life, for example. No, there needs to be something like a continuity here that, that the founding people of Western societies, that is us, our people, we should have the right to, at the very least, thrive in our own societies, not just surviving. We should be thriving in our own societies. And there's no way that any, any amount of any number of people should be allowed to vote against what is best for us. So there should be something, yeah, there should be something out there. Question number 18. Sex crimes, such as rape and attacks on children, deserve more than mere imprisonment. Such criminals ought to be publicly whipped or worse. I do agree to this, though uh, I'm not in favor of corporal punishment, but I am in favor of banishment. We should banish these people from society. That's what they did in the, in the ancient Viking ages. Uh, importantly, for example, uh, uh, Eric the Viking committed murder and he was banished from Iceland and that's how he discovered Greenland. All right. Okay, that's a positive story. But let's say uh, some guy named Ahmed rapes white children. He should just be deported. I wouldn't waste time whipping him. No, just deport him. Question number 19. Homosexuals are hardly better than criminals and ought to be severely punished. No, they shouldn't be punished. But you know what? who should be punished? The people who promote it as a lifestyle nowadays. Like I mentioned the alphabet circus. I think in the alphabet circus, um, what they're doing is they're actually grooming children. If you groom children, hard degree, you will have the death penalty, right? But just being this way, uh, it's not up to me to decide why you are that way. I don't really know that much about it, you know? I think it may be a consequence of abuse that you suffered as a child. That's my, my opinion. Um, but I wouldn't punish you for that. Again, that would be a double punishment. Look, man, the truth is, naturally, a very small number of people are this way anyway. Uh, you could just ignore them and society would be fine. But like I said, if this question were about, you know, gays grooming kids, hard death penalty right away. Question number 20. A person who has who has bad manners, habits, and breeding can hardly expect to get along with decent people. This is something I agree with so much. You know what my one number one problem is with certain minorities? Is that they are lower class. Almost all of them are. And even the ones who get rich and successful, they still speak to you in that lower class slang, like, hey, yo, damn, fuck that shit, man. I gotta go to work. Damn, I don't wanna go to work, man. Fuck that shit, man. Oh, I hate those people. Now, I may be a Dutch person speaking to you in English, right? And I don't sound like I'm upper class, but I also don't sound like I'm lower class. I, I, do, I do properly pronounce my sentences you know, as best as I can. My point is, you don't hear me say, fuck that shit, damn nigga. You know, I don't say things like that. Can you say nigger? I can say nigger. But what I wanted to say is, you know, 
That's why it's the bad manners, the, ha the lower class habits, lower class demeanor, really. They're very depressed, like, the world is always against me, man. Like, they're never going to give me a chance. Ah, I hate those people. That's why they fail in life, after all. They're just negative. Question 21. People can be divided into two distinct classes. The weak and the strong. <laughs> Do I need to say more? Question 22. Some people are born with an urge to jump from high places. Oh, yeah. I think so. I met a guy once who was a base jumper. He told me he didn't feel anything at all. He could jump off a cliff, land himself safely, because apparently he did care enough about his life to land, but he didn't feel a thing. That's what he said. He said the reason he jumped off of high places was because he couldn't feel anything. Maybe he was trying to feel something. You know, it doesn't really equate to an urge to jump from high places, though. Though I do believe that's possible. So I'm going to give this like a soft agreement. Question number 23. What the youth needs most is strict discipline, rugged determination, and the will to work and fight for family and country. Oh, yeah, this is exactly what is missing. And when we speak of strict discipline, I don't mean you need to do your, uh, your mathematics homework. But with discipline, I mean, do your sports three times a week. I even I even I go to the I don't go to the gym. I just go outside. I do physical exercise three times three times a week. I eat well, you know, I clean my house. This is important. You need to learn about that kind of discipline. You have to have determination. I wish I had more determination. In fact, I wish as a child they had taught me more about how to find determination. I've only recently uh, been reading up on our. Uh, on the psychological concept of integrating your shadow. Your shadow is your dark side, but your dark side has a lot of energy in it. And you can tap into that energy to give yourself more determination and more will to work. You know, and I feel it already, even right now, as I'm doing this little, little podcast uh, show, uh, I feel inside myself a drive to still do things and achieve things. Even though I'm getting old, I, I am nowhere near giving up on this life. My life is just getting started, you know. I've only done the preparatory work so far, all right. Definitely fight for family and country. I would fight for a country, race, and civilization, yeah, all right. I understand if some people don't have a happy family, but you got to fight for your people. And that's what I'm doing. Question number 24. Nowadays, more and more people are prying into matters that should remain personal and private. Hell yeah. What about those NSA and the corporations and all those people? Didn't we get Edward Snowden to disclose all this? Come on, man. And the surveillance cameras. I would like to live in a world without that many surveillance cameras, but maybe with closed borders. See, see what they're doing. They're doing the opposite, right? They're opening the borders. But now everywhere you go, there's surveillance cameras. How about we remove the surveillance cameras and we simply deport the bastards that we have to survey? Huh? Question 25. An insult to our country's honor should always be punished. I'm going to say a soft agreement to this. Like I'm not looking to give you the death penalty for insulting your country or something. But if you're not on our side, then what are you doing here? That's my attitude. Nowadays, question number 26. When so many kinds of people move around and mix, a person has to protect himself, especially carefully against catching an infection or disease from strangers. I was one of those people who did not get the job and I did not wear the face mask. I was not personally very afraid of getting infected. Uh, I think during the years of COVID, I had no, no, no medical condition whatsoever. Though now afterwards, I think uh, two weeks ago, I had the flu for two days. But I don't fear these kinds of things. I don't, you don't get them from strangers. I just don't really believe in this theory. I understand this is probably one of those uh, Nazi beliefs, right? Well, I don't really believe in those. So this is a, a soft disagreement, or maybe a good disagreement, because, you know, well, I do agree that mixing and moving people around. In Europe, we have some cases of typhus or something, because migrants coming from Africa are, are bringing these uh, diseases over. That may be true, but, you know, you know, how to interpret this question? Uh, me, me personally, I have no such fears. But do uh, that's because I avoid, you know, low class people, maybe. 
you know what? I'm going to give this a soft agreement. Question number 27. There is hardly anything lower than a person who does not feel a great love, gratitude, and respect for his parents. Uh, I disagree with this. It depends. If you have, like, narcissistic parents, uh, you're not going to respect them. If your parents support you and love you and guide you through your developmental process, especially the, the first 16 years of your life or so, maybe then you obviously deserve to, deserve to give them respect. So it depends. Again, this depends. It depends on your parents. It depends on your parents. I'm going to give it a soft agreement with the caveat that if your parents were very abusive, you don't have to respect them. Question 28. Human nature being what it is, there will always be war and conflict. Yeah, there will always be war and conflict. I definitely agree to that. This notion that you can just organize the world society in such a way that there will be no more war and conflict, it's just so childish. It's just not realistic. Of course, there will always be war and conflict. So, But instead of having large conflicts that may wipe out humanity, why don't we organize it so that we will have, we allow for small conflicts so that hot pockets, hot heads can have at it, uh, maybe hurt each other a little bit, but leave the rest of humanity alone. So we should make it more manageable. I'm going to give this a strong agreement. Question 28, we're almost there. Every person should have complete faith in some supernatural power whose decisions he obeys without question. Yeah, look, see, this is, this is cheating. The first part of the question, it's actually three different questions. Should every person have a faith in something? Should it be in some supernatural power? That's two. And should you obey this power's decisions without question? That's three. I agree that people should have <coughs> faith, complete faith. People should have faith. I agree to that. Uh, and the people should believe in something greater than merely the physical existence, right? The physical world, like this table and the computer over here. You can't believe in that because it's dead. It doesn't do anything. You got to believe in something living, something alive, something spiritual, something supernatural. Something super means that is above the physical natural world. Yeah. I'm going to give this a soft agreement because of that. I don't agree with the final part that you have to obey without question. Rather, I believe you should be able to interpret, you know, isn't that what Protestantism says, by the way? Protestantism says that every man can interpret the Bible on his own, right? You have a personal connection to God. I kind of like that idea. So, no, I don't believe in obedience. I think obedience has as a problem that when leftists take over, they also expect you to obey their bullshit. And we don't want that. Final question. Wars and social troubles may someday be ended by an earthquake or flood that will destroy the whole world. <sighs> yeah, but only temporarily. I've heard about the Samsung option. That's why I'm going to give this a soft agreement. I heard about the Samsung option. Uh, Israeli leaderships has said publicly on TV that if Israel is destroyed by its enemies, Israel will retaliate by nuking the pillars of civilization, meaning our capitals, Paris, London, Berlin, Moscow, and so on. Would that put an end to uh, our social troubles? <laughs> For a while, as we, if you bomb people back to the Bronze Age, yeah. Yeah, it will be, it will be fine for a long time, yeah. That is true. So I'll give a soft agreement on that. Let's find out. Oh, Jesus. F scale test, my results. Okay. Okay, there's all sorts of uh, factors. I didn't expect this. I expected them to give me like one answer. Oh, here we go. Blah, 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 blah. It makes me 28.6% more authoritarian than the average person. I take that as a compliment. So apparently I'm not quite a radical fascist as some people think I am, but I am higher on conventionalism, authoritarian aggression, not on submission, all right? And I am on superstition stereotypy. <laughs> Because I believe in something greater than merely our physical existence, they call you stereotypy, superstition stereotypy. Okay, okay. I'm very high on power toughness. Yeah, yeah, I believe in that. Uh, projectivity, okay. 
whatever. And I'm very high on anti-degeneracy. Yeah. Yes, I am. Total score is high. Really? Can you believe that? Didn't I give you like sensible arguments for why I believe, why I, why I made certain choices? I think it was, I think it was very sensible, you know. And then they say, "Oh, you you have a very high score on the F scale test. You're a fascist." Jesus, I think almost everybody who would take this test is going to end up looking fascist. Maybe that's what was wrong with the test, huh, Mister Adorno? Okay, well, you know. I'm low. I'm low on conventionalism, apparently, and I'm an anti-interception. What the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. Interception. My opposition to the subjective and the imaginative, as well as a dislike of abstract art and tender mind. Ah, okay, whatever. You, you see how intellectual this gets. It's, it's a bit nonsense. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, I suppose uh, I will do another test series because I, I like doing this because I like to expose the thought processes behind these tests to show people, uh, you know, you don't have to believe these things at face value. Have an, oh, follow me on www.jmk.info. That's my newsletter. And you can go to my TikTok as well at The Great Johan.